This is a January update on my 112 gallon average reef. Unfortunately, another month goes by, no new additions, but I have made some moderate changes. I did actually lose one coral, and by lose, I mean I completely lost it. I had a frag of yellow zoanthids that fell somewhere in the rocks, and even though the tank is bare bottom and there's nothing on the actual bottom I could look underneath, I was unable to find the frag, despite the fact that I tore this whole rock structure apart. It's been a few days, and again, it looks like one solid rock, but this is actually quite a few pieces. It's just, they're completely covered in coral, so it looks like one piece, especially with the coral growing across pieces. In hindsight, I should have just left the piece. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes pieces fall, even if they're glued. That doesn't mean it's going to stay forever. I've got one single Mexican turbo snail who's got to be pushing five years old and he's the likely culprit. Now that it's been a few days though, I actually like the way it turned out. This green leather is looking even bigger than it was before. Part of that is it's closer to the front so it looks bigger, but it also seems to open up a little bit more too. On this side, the Kenya Tree Army continues to expand. I've got a lot more frags of it in my frag tank, which will be in my next video. This green acro mini colony is truly a mini colony. The branches are getting thicker and spreading out from the single branches. I'm curious to see how this is going to look in another six months or so. The mealy below it took a bit of a pounding when uh, I moved the rock around. At the first time uh, it wasn't quite as secure as I'd hoped so it fell off again. It's been re-glued and is looking fine again. Well not quite as bad as the Kenya trees. My neon green toadstools love to split as well. You can't tell because the polyps are out, but there's several big holes in the main colony, meaning it will be dropping frags in the coming weeks. There's even one behind uh, the green leather, which you can't really see, but because I have the other two here, it's not really a big deal. Some of the placement makes, difficult to f makes it difficult to film. But I kind of like the idea of corals behind other corals and you kind of have to look around them to see them. It makes it seem like you have a whole lot more. I didn't put the rock flower anemone here, it actually moved. But it looks quite nice in person, even if it is difficult to film. Despite the fact it looks like it's in a cave, it's getting quite a bit of light, even though it's surrounded by corals above it. Looking at the Gorgonian, it can now actually reach the surface if it were to stand up straight. That's unlikely to happen since I'm not sure it can even support itself to stand up straight. And it's pounded by the waves coming from this Jabo power head. Everything over here is doing well. The bird's nest is another coral that's been knocked many times by the turbo snail. Uh, despite the fact it's glued, it still is able to knock it over. I've added uh, quite a bit this time, so hopefully it will stay put. This one zoanthid frag that's new, it was just two polyps when I got it, and now the babies are starting to grow. I guess it's been about a month and a half, so it should have some growth, but keep in mind it did spend 50 hours in transit. The side view is my favorite, even though the tank is only 18 inches front to back, it still offers the nicest view. I'm hoping when I do the next video update in February, I'll have some new additions somehow, but 
Who knows? Nevertheless, the tank is looking good. Uh, even without new corals or fish, there are changes. And it's nice to document them and look back at them. Thanks a lot for watching, and happy reefing.